Hello and welcome to the Arsenal Way. Back with you guys for another episode of our Transfer Insight Show, the show in which we look behind the scenes about players that have been linked to the club. And today we are talking about Romanian striker Ignanis Stryker. Uh, to do so, I'm joined by a someone who is very much in the world of Romanian football, looking behind the scenes at all the youth players and, and with very much a vested interest in Romanian football. It's Alex. How are you doing, mate? Are you well? Hello, hello. How are you? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. No problem at all. Yeah, talk to me about the interest of Romanian football um, and, and how you've got that interest in, in the players from the specific region. So basically, I'm, I'm Romanian. So mm. naturally, uh, I'm interested in that. And we had a few hard years. Even now, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy for Romanian football, but mm. uh, I got more and more interested in uh, with age and also looking at um, some nice performances we had uh, with the uh, youth national teams like the under 21 at the mm. euros in 2019 and 2021 so naturally I, I got more and more interested in young romanian players awesome stuff and of course i mean in yanis Stoica currently at uh, football club style bucharest to talk to me about that because uh, whether or not you know about the, the kind of the, the name changing that goes on with Stal Bucharest, obviously a very famous club um, throughout European football. Um, but when the name of the club obviously popped up on a lot of Arsenal fans' feeds and seeing FCSB uh, come up, there was a little bit of confusion asking around who the club were. Could, could you provide some insight as to why that, that name change has gone on so much? Uh, yes, to make it short, uh, originally Stal Bucharest was uh, the club of the, the army from Romania mm. and um, it got uh, bought back uh, by uh, Bekali, who is the actual owner of FCSB. Mm. Um, and yeah, they had some some beef and some issues. Uh, everything was uh, done uh, with uh, the justice and they just said, OK, uh, Bekali lost the brand and the trophies before, I think, uh, 2014. Mm. So everything went to the new club, who is now in second division. And who's called Chesa Stoa Bucharest, right? And now, so they call it uh, FCSB. And in general, for people, FCSB is not really Stoa Bucharest anymore. So, but right. you always have some fans who are between the two, or they mm. choose one side. Uh, it's nothing really, really official. Interesting, no. I mean, it makes me think of like Red Bull Salzburg in Austria and kind of the. the... Uh, Austria Salzburg that were previously the club then being taken almost a different scenario but certainly the fans from the fan perspective are being then split between two kind of teams in that scenario yes. so, in Romania it's scenario. a big issue with mm. many clubs who have this this type of problems with the fans uh, choosing another side and the owners having other interests and many problems like that let's talk about Anja Stoika of course yes. the player that we're here to, to discuss he's been linked uh, I suppose over the last kind of two weeks or so, the, the links have emerged uh, initially coming out of Romanian media. And then, of course, Bicali, who you mentioned uh, in an interview, said about how there was a 7.5 million euro offer on the table. And he confirmed that it was supposedly from Arsenal and that he wanted 10 million euros yes. for the player plus a 20% sell on clause. Before we go into kind of the, the, the politics of, of the, any possible move, Tell me about who Yanis Stoika is as a player and what Arsenal fans could expect from him. So Yanis Stoika, first of all, he's the son of a former football player who also played at the Petrolu Ploiesht, where Yanis Stoika started football. Um, he went on a small trip in Germany, I think, and then came back at FCSB when he was only 14 years old. Uh, there he... Uh, had his first minutes in professional football at only 14 years old when he played the uh, cup games and he also scored. So at that moment, of course, uh, the medias were going crazy and talking about him uh, a lot. Uh, but he just uh, worked on his side, um, staying out of the the, the light, uh, if we can say that. Um, he got a few... Um, loaned uh, in in second divisions uh, at Petrolul and then uh, at another club I can remember the name and he just uh, worked on himself and now he's back at FCSB and uh, he was not supposed to be a, a main player this season like nobody was uh, even waiting for him to, to be a, a scorer or, or a, a, a starting a regular player yeah. 
Yeah, a regular, yes. But uh, he 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 just played a few minutes uh, at the ending of some games and always entering well, uh, scoring, uh, playing with confidence. Uh, he 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 really has some some rare qualities in Romanian football, I think. We can talk about it if you want. Yeah, go for it. I mean, characteristically, what we're talking about him as a striker, is he someone who's quick and technical on the ball, more of a target man? Where do you kind of classify him as a forward? Yes, yeah, so uh, I, I define him as a, like, it's a, a central forward uh, striker, but with mm. winger qualities. Right. It's it's kind of uh, interesting for me because in f Romanian football, it's quite rare. It, he has a big physique. I don't mm. know since when, like two years ago, he was pretty skinny and he was still young, but now he's mm. still only uh, 18 years old. But he he's very solid, very strong, strong legs. Uh, not too big, but not too small. <laughs> yes, I think. I think <laughs> yes, maybe or maybe just naturally. Mm. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, that's that's a good point for him. Mm. Uh, quite gifted technically. Not the most gifted player we have, uh, but he's very good uh, technically, and he can he can go past his opponents and go in 1v1 and, and eliminate him because mm. he's fast as you said maybe not like Mbappe but <laughs> he's, he's still he's still fast I saw it uh, even in the last game mm. he was just too fast for the the, the opponents to to catch him and then uh, the main point for me yes go on no go on sorry <laughs> uh, yes, the main point for me uh sorry is uh, who makes real the difference is uh, his mental aspect because he seems to be very calm, very confident. Um, I think his father is uh, uh, giving him very good advices in general mm. on the way he he, can, he has to manage his career and he, his games in general. Um, even in an interview, we saw him talking and he's like a, a very good kid, you know. I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you mean uh, from a mentality perspective. Um, yes. I mean, Mikel Arteta and Arsenal are, are looking specifically at players that, you know, have a good character about mm -hmm. them, that, they, that they're that they willing to fight and they, they train hard, they're sensible, they, they are willing to, to you know, learn and develop in under the tutelage of, of Arteta or, or Edu or whoever they're looking to bring in. So I know exactly what you mean. Um when you talk about him, you said he may not be the best technical player or the best player at, at the club, but why do you think it is, though, if he's not, say, the best technically there, why do you think Arsenal might be interested in him still? I think because uh, he has overall overall qualities. Like, I, I couldn't even find a real default he has. Mm. Maybe he doesn't have a perfect left foot, but uh, for the rest, uh, he really all has many many qualities and i i couldn't find a, something he he Absolutely. can't do he's yeah. good with the header he's good uh, with his feet he can dribble he can keep the ball he can pass he participates to the game often he knows how to move i think he's smart he's a smart player too yeah and that's also something rare you can be fast very technically gifted very talented but if you're not smart and you don't know where to go on the pitch where to move to create danger and to to be in front of the goal, it's harder. But I think I think he, he really has that quality. So from your perspective, then, when you hear figures like seven point five million euros uh, and and Bacali wanting ten million euros, is that a fair representation? Do you think of his value? Uh, that's really a hard question. Uh, now Bacali will always ask more. That's how mm. how he does it. I don't even know if. Uh, it's really official what he said. Right. Uh, I, I can't be sure about it. Uh, mm. I, I would need some someone from Arsenal to confirm this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, from the English media perspective, there hasn't been really anything. Yeah, um, it's, it. it has mainly come from that, that end of things. That's it. But uh, it's it can be, it can happen. Like, it's not really absurd. The, the player is interesting, and I think uh, many other clubs uh, are... Uh, probably following him and for the price uh, like you asked um, uh, yes yeah, 7.5 million could be a, a correct price mm. uh, when you see uh, on which price some other players are sold uh, in Romania or in other countries mm. it's not uh, it's correct
10, 10 will be a bit uh, a bit much i think uh, because yeah. he, he we have to be honest he, he doesn't he didn't play uh, even 20 games i think in first division mm. it's a bit soon and it's only uh, the romanian first division so it's soon as a measure obviously you're looking at that and you're thinking what kind of qualities it's difficult to gauge and how we might transition to say the english game yes. and uh, and move into that but just lastly if say arsenal were to acquire him and and to get him in say either in january or the summer window if, if this interest does turn out to be very true do you think from his perspective that's the right kind of move for him or do you think he should maybe pursue a, a deal with a club where he may get more minutes at, at kind of adult senior level I will more go with a club who can like immediately g give him real time mm. play time. Um, but as I said, I think he's mentally very, 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 very good. And I, I presume if he goes to Arsenal, he will probably mm. firstly play with uh, the under 23 yeah. team uh, or get a loan. That's not a problem for him. Like I said, he, he was at FCSB and he, he was always asking to play. Not mm. to be in the, the 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 first team and just wait for his chance. He he just wanted to play, even if it's what's in second or third division. Mm. So it could work, but I would prefer to see him just play every week and develop more and more uh, in order to 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 get better. Absolutely. Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and giving the listeners a bit of insight around Iana Stoika. Tell people where they can find you on social media. Thank you. Thank you too. It was a pleasure. Um on Twitter, it's Alex Scout uh, Ro, and uh, on YouTube, the the same name. Also on Instagram, but less active. So yes, mainly Twitter and, and uh, YouTube. Lovely stuff. You'll be able to find a brilliant report by Alex specifically on uh, Iana Storica as well, which I can attest is, is very good. Make sure you go and check it out. Um, we'll be back, of course, with our morning shows, but we've got the press conference ahead of the game against Manchester United on Thursday, and then we'll be looking ahead to the game with the help from some of our guys over in the Manchester United team as well. So we'll see you again very, very soon. But as always, keep following us down the Arsenal way. Glory, 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 glory,